you know, uh, just recently someone pointed out to me, and it's not a recent fact, it's an age-old fact, that when we look at the air that we breathe, the composition of that air, uh, we hear so much about carbon and we need to reduce the carbon input and, and, and we're responsible for car creating all the, this carbon pollution everywhere. Uh, it was pointed out to me that, that in the air that we breathe, 78% of that air is nitrogen, 21% uh, is oxygen. So that's 99% of the air that we breathe is comprised of nitrogen and oxygen. The other 1% is comprised of uh, argon and uh, and oh and carbon, point point zero three percent is carbon, and uh, and and if it's true, and I don't have have the data to show that it's true, but some folks say that that the impact of the carbon in the air could be manipulated by uh, about twenty percent by human activity, and if that's true, then it would be point zero zero six of 1%, that's six one thousandths of a percent of impact that all human activity could actually have on the quality of the air we breathe in relation to carbon. So uh, those are things that we need to consider before we light our hair on fire talking about carbon pollution. And uh, do we still want to reduce pollution? Absolutely we do. Do we still want to find out more efficient ways to, uh, to burn hydrocarbons, uh, and we've seen the industry really step up and do that when, uh, you know, we've seen uh, miles per gallon per vehicle uh, significantly increase in the last two decades. Uh, uh, you know, I remember in the, growing up in the 70s, and, and, and I'm a little behind my, my colleague Earl from Red Deer here, uh, he grew up in the 60s, I grew up in the 70s, uh, and uh, and I was really fond of muscle cars, and uh, s some of the muscle cars that I owned at that time, I, I very first one I ever bought when I was 16 was a 1970 Mustang Mach 1, 351 Cleveland automatic. It was beautiful. It had a shaker hood. It had the louvers on the rear window. It was blue and black accents. It was a wonderful car. But you know what? I, I would have been very lucky in those days to get 15 miles to the gallon. Very, very lucky. I had an awful lot of fun burning those those uh, uh, gas uh, for those 15 miles for every gallon that I did drive. But you know, uh, we have cars being produced today with the same amount of horsepower or more that will get 30 miles to the gallon. And that's a testament to industry, to where technology has come. And so we've reduced uh, the amount of hydrocarbons that we consume for the same amount of horsepower that we create. And whether that's in uh, in gasoline-powered engines or or diesel-powered engines, and we know this carbon tax is particularly uh, burdensome on uh, on the, our transportation industry, who are some of the heaviest users of diesel fuel in our country. We know that uh, every semi truck driving down the highway is burning diesel fuel, and uh, the construction industry also is consumed with heavy equipment. That Jean, un point d'ordre, point d'ordre rapide, Monsieur le Président. Just. Uh, we have a, a point of order from Monsieur Smart. Monsieur Smart, go just ahead. Just simplement, simplement par cœur. Yes, a point of order. Just out of curiosity, I would ask my good colleague Ted. I certainly understand that he appreciates. Uh, drinking his strawberry milkshake through a plastic straw and that he likes muscle cars. But what is the link between all of this and the sub-amendment? I would like to hear what the link to the sub-amendment is. You know, these uh, fancy cars and these plastic straws. Maybe I just haven't got it, but please tell. Do tell. Tomorrow, for your uh, point of order, uh, Mr. Falk, I would just... Uh uh, ask uh, to keep it relevant to the sub-amendment. I know your passion for lots of uh, things over the years, but if we could keep it to the sub-amendment that you actually brought forward. So okay, thank thanks. you. You, the, you have the floor, sir. Th uh, thank you for focusing me again, Mr. Chairman, and, and the fact that uh, Mr. Samard brought up my muscle cars just made me think back of the, the 70 Challenger Hemi that I bought, which I had for a period of time, the big block Chevelle convertible. Cool. Uh, just a phenomenal, and then I, I bought a, a, v, a, a, a Vega, Chevrolet Vega that somebody had wedged a little 327 Chevy in there. That thing just went like a bandit, oh. and uh, and so yeah, that really refocused my thoughts on on my my 